How's it going everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now this is probably how Bloom is looking for you in Unreal Engine right now. And this is how Bloom should look in real life. As you can see, there are actually some like streaks coming out of the light that you can see in the camera. This is part of how real illumination will work if the camera was facing that light. And it happens a lot when you're doing especially sci-fi scenes that tend to look at a lot of emissive. This can become very apparent and can give a touch of not being so realistic as you may want. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. However, before we do that, uh, let me thank everybody that supports the channel, everybody that's been sharing my videos because all of a sudden I got a bump in subscribers and views in the last three weeks. It's been amazing. Thank you, everybody. And special shout out to my level two Patreons that are here on screen right now. Uh, there are two levels in the Patreon if you want to join in. Uh, if you join in level one, you get some goodies on Discord. If you join level two, you get these videos on early access and you'll get a shout out like the ones on screen. Now, if you can join the Patreon or if you don't like Patreon, I do have the join button with the same perks downstairs. Uh, it should be right around here. I don't know. But I do have the join button if you want to help the channel that way. If not, then just leaving a like and leaving a comment goes a long way. And hey, join our Discord, join our awesome community, especially if you have any questions. A Discord is the best way to answer them. You can also follow me on Twitter. Uh, now I have an Instagram and people started to follow me there too. I do post some updates there as well. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, if that's your thing, then please do so. It helps a lot. One little thing before we start the video, you want to stay all the way till the end because I'm going to show you something really cool that I got for next week's video. Now, let's start with the video. Now that we're here in Unreal Engine, I'm going to show you what's going on. So don't mind the noise here. It's a little bit about reflections in this. I need to improve the reflections in this map. But anyways, we're here to talk about Bloom. Now, as you can see, right now, we have the standard method of Bloom. So this is what you will see in video games. And if you increase it, you can get a little bit more of a halo. Uh, let me take the lens flare out. And let's see, it's a 0 0.01. Just so it's there, but it's not horrible. This is how Unreal does bloom and this is how most of us know how to do bloom in unreal however as i showed you in the beginning this is not realistic at all this is how you get your environment to look more like a video game and the reason why you want to use this is because of performance issues so if you use the other method that we're going to talk about you're going to see a drop in performance if this is a real-time setting if this is a video game but if you're doing things for filmmaking if you're doing things for a sequencer, like I usually do, then this isn't much of a performance hit. And for the most part, you don't have to have a super beefy computer to take this kind of hit. So it's super easy. All we have to do is go here into your post-processing volume and hopefully your post-processing volume is already unbound. So that means that it goes everywhere. As you can see, infinite. And what we're going to do is we're going to change method from standard to convolution. So uh, take a look at these lights and see what happens to them when I switch back to convolution. There you go. So this looks more like a real world bloom. If a camera is facing the light directly, this little rays is actually what it should look like in the real world. So this will give you a more realistic scenario for the lights that are shining through and very specific the reason why i chose this scene is because this helps a lot in sci-fi scenes when you have a bunch of little lights like this and if there was an actual camera in this room then you will get this effect not the other kind because this is how it looks with standard you can see the there's a marked difference in there all you have to do is switch to convolution however this effect is highly dependent on the type of light and how the light is facing the camera. So if it's not working for you, then um, just make sure that you face the light a little bit more because as you can see, as they go further into distance, I kind of lose 
this effect because that's how the camera is supposed to work. That being said, there are some settings that we can modify if you want things to be more apparent. So uh, we have convolution scale, which it's a value from zero to one. If you want to reduce this, you can see the it disappears. We can make it 0.5. It's a little bit more subtle, but it's defaulted to one. So you can play with that if you feel that your convolution is too bright or is too, you know, in the face. And then the other value that I like to play with is convolution boost multiplier. So what we're going to do here is if we lower this, as you can see, this doesn't do anything. Um, but if you increase it, it will actually give you a bit more of a shine to it. And this is extremely apparent. So here you can see the actual difference between convolution and standard. And by the way, once you switch to convolution, uh, this threshold no longer does anything. What does something is the intensity. So if I were to take it on and off for some reason, it affects, but it's not letting me play with the intensity. And this intensity has nothing to do with the convolution bloom. It's just a flag for some reason that you need to take on and off. But the way that you're going to control your convolution bloom is by one of these two settings that I have right here. So let me uh, turn it down to default. And this is how you would generally do it. You can see here there's something called a convolution kernel. And this is if you have a very specific texture. And actually, I'm going to give a shout out to um, Epsilonite. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I bought this pack is very inexpensive. I believe it's like $11 and it's well worth the money because it will allow you to get this different types of convolution kernels that we have here. So I'm going to show you how they work. By the way, I'm not sponsored by this person. I spent my own money and bought this asset because I saw it look really cool and it helped me. It could help me do something that I want to do in my short film. So once you get that pack, uh, you're going to get this little bloom kernel folder and you're going to have all your textures here. So all you, these convolution kernels are a little bit brighter than the default. So the developer recommends that you change some parameters here. So we're going to talk about them, but let's just try the first one. First one will be your default kind of convolution kernel. So let's dim it down to 0.5 and uh, we can even push it further down to like 0.2 and we have the boost multiplier which he recommends to start between 2 and 60 so if we're to go to 60 you can see that we get a nice shine to it and it's a little bit different than the kernel that you have by default so if we were to do 0.5 which is what he recommends this is way too shiny and we just bump this down with this value. So you can see you, you can play with both values. So let's try another kernel right here. Let's try this one. And you can see you get different results with each one you use. This is the reason why I got this one because it's so good. It allows you to tailor the bloom that you get from the lights. This is cool for like a police chase or something. And yeah, there are several here. For now, I'm just using the first one because these two are my favorite because they are very realistic and they go with exactly what I need. Now, if you don't have this pack, then you can just use what Unreal gives you, which is, you know, your regular convolution here. All you have to do is make sure that you increase it so you can see what's going on. And again, I highly recommend this pack and it will allow you to create some very, very cool lights. Now, one of the things that I also need to show you is the fact that you need to have either an emissive or something that makes the bloom reflection for the convolution to work. Because if you just has, have a light, like let me just take these out of here. Uh, if we put this light here and we're looking at the light, nothing's happening because there isn't anything to create bloom. So if I were to take out these lights from here, you can still see that there are some little rays coming out as bloom from here because the emissive is the one that's generating the bloom. Uh, this is 
the basics of using Bloom if, if you're new to Unreal or you just started off. Usually if you want to have Bloom in your scene, you need to have an emissive map of some sort, be it um, a light of like this or just create a sphere and add an emissive material. If you don't know how to do an emissive material, let me show you real quick how to make one. I just right click, go to material, get into it. And what you're gonna do is make this unlit. So it's, cause it doesn't have to be lit and it helps with performance. So make it unlit. Cause all you want is the emissive color. After that, you had to do three. Uh, just hold three and click. It'll give you this little box right here. Then hold the letter M and then hold S, okay? So what do I have here? I have a constant vector three, which allows me to select color. So let me, yeah, let's do kind of like bluish emissive. This is to calculate the intensity and let's turn it to 25. That's my default. And we just plug these two in. We plug this here, you apply and you got an emissive material. So is that easy? If you need to add some emissives to your scene to generate that sort of bloom, all you have to do is throw this on any mesh and there you go, you have an emissive material. Let me give you a reason to subscribe and ring the bell for next week. I was gifted this pack just because it's it's so awesome. I actually reached out to Machine Gun Studios and asked them if they want me to showcase it on the channel. This pack is amazing and there's a lot to talk about it. So you don't want to miss that for next week. So please stay tuned, subscribe, and um, I'll see you in the next video.